Do you think science fiction can help us think through theology? Yes. So I have a talk coming up here uh, very shortly, the end of the month, and it's going to be about whether Google and ChatGPT are better than the uh, computers on Star Trek. And so it's a fun topic. It's, you know, everybody is getting really interested, particularly educators are freaking out about ChatGPT. But we'd already been very concerned about you know, the use of the internet, misinformation. You know, how do you teach students skills to navigate these things? And it's particularly challenging when it comes to religion and religious studies in a lot of ways, because I mean, there's a lot of misinformation on the internet, but oh gosh, there's some really weird stuff about religion, right? Lots of really weird sites about the Bible, you know, and some of them are at the intersection of religion and science fiction, right? It's like why angels, you know, are really aliens or why aliens are really angels, you know, and it's, it's just, yeah. So yes, in all sorts of ways. And I think just some of them are, you know, the fact that people's belief in, you know, things about the cosmos, their hopes for the future get expressed in sci-fi, sometimes in with a veneer of the secular, but yet in ways that are strikingly religious. But then it also gives us all these fun thought experiments, right? You can do things with like the transporter or with an Android. And it allows you to think about personhood, about the soul, you know, about the value of lives. You know, is this a living person or not? And allows us to dig into our long history of uh, dehumanization and think about empathy and all kinds of things that I think are, are humanly important just in general, but are religiously important and theologically important. I mean, I, I love, you know, I love this. I love the Star Wars franchise, and I think it's done wonderful things in terms of just complicating, you know, the narratives that you often get of good versus evil, right? That, you know, the Jedi are not infallible and perfect. And uh, when they get too, too close to the line where the blurry line, where the good and the bad meet, it actually really messes things up for a whole galaxy, right? You know? And Luke learns over the course of the, you know, the story that, and others learn that actually, you know, this Jedi approach of detachment and just like denying love and attachment, actually you know, finding balance between, you know, the emotions and the attachment and the love and even the anger, you know, at somebody who's threatening your family and yet realizing that you go too far down that route and it distorts you into somebody that you don't want to be. And it can be very hard and for many people impossible to find your way back. And yet, you know, it's ultimately a story of redemption. You know? And so that's that's a good one. Uh, I'm trying to think what I've watched recently that's or what I've listened to or read recently. Um, yeah, there there are some really great stories. If, if we're thinking about whether a machine can be a person, there's an author, uh, S. Divya, wrote a book called Machinehood, right? So it's like personhood, but machinehood. And it's about you know, whether machines deserve rights and things like that. Uh, even even um, uh, Kim Stanley Robinson's Minis Ministry for the Future, which is really relevant because it's about climate change and things like that. Uh, you know, I'm listening to the audiobook of this and you know, there's a heat wave hitting India, which is how the novel starts. So it's not a major spoiler, but it's like, you know, fact and fiction, you know, are just in such close proximity that, you know, that one's a powerful book to read at the moment. But the idea gets suggested, minor spoiler here, you know, stop your ears if you don't want this. It's not a major plot point, but it comes up in a conversation. Somebody saying, we basically need a religion to motivate people to do this, right? Just telling people protect the environment doesn't seem to connect with them. You know, you need something that's, you know, somehow spiritual. And so even in uh, literary fiction, even in films, yeah, you know, sometimes the most interesting stuff is not the one where it's like, hey, this is going to be about, you know, religion in the distant future or in deep space or among aliens. It's the ones that don't seem to have those themes right at the surface, but are there when you dig a little deeper or ask the right questions that sometimes are the most interesting precisely because they're not saying, okay, we're going to make a point of this. They're just exploring them in ways that are, are deeply interesting.